I was a kid, Alexander the Great was like Jesse James, while Bill Hickok, but even bigger. It is a brutal landscape, and it's one that he's going to have to navigate. I think it is the biggest epic part that could be wished on anyone. He had to go through a fire. He put it in his mind that I am going to be Alexander. It's going to be a lot of blood. It's going to be a lot of blood. It's going to be a lot of lives lost. The story of Alexander the Great is one of the most extraordinary in all of history. He conquered almost the entire known world before the age of 25, and he did it on foot and on horseback. It has been Oscar-winning filmmaker Oliver Stone's lifelong ambition to bring Alexander's story to the silver screen. Well, Alexander has been a character in my imagination for since I was a child. Alexander was, was cool. He was the guy you know, die young and leave a good-looking corpse, you know, what else, and conquer the world besides, what else is there? Uh, there's nothing better. And the beauty of Alexander is he won. Stone has chosen 28-year-old Irish heartthrob Colin Farrell to fill perhaps the biggest boots in history. Over the next three months, Colin will have to give up his superstar lifestyle and prepare for one of the toughest challenges of his career. He must transform himself from pin-up actor to one of the greatest conquerors to walk the face of the earth. I felt very comfortable with him from the screen test. I felt like he's got it. He's got the right raucous Irish, a little bit rough, like the Mas Macedonians. But he's got it, but he's poetic in his uh, speech patterns, if you allow him to be. So what he says has got a beauty. It's got a nice voice. And that's very important. Alexander was right in there in the thick of it, you know. He was, he was right in there in the front line. I mean, the equivalent today would be, you know, to see... George and Debbie walking down the street in Baghdad with an AK-47. Alexander is a controversial figure. To some, he was a military genius and empire builder. To others, he was a bloodthirsty monster. As Colin begins his journey, Alexander is still a mystery. In early July 2003, Colin moves to an isolated trailer in the mountains outside Los Angeles to clear his head and begin the long process of becoming Alexander. I need primarily to, to stay out of trouble, to, to stay away from mischief, which I get myself into. Nothing big, but I just like to have a good time. I don't know how to do this job. I don't know how to uh, prepare for it. It's monumental. It's huge. It's 10 years of Oliver Stone's life. It's 2,300 years of history. And, you know... I need space, I need to be on my own, I need to be able to read, I need to be able to work out, I need to be able to think, I need to be able to even self-indulgently con contemplate what I have to do, what's ahead of me. For Colin, stage one is a gruelling programme of physical training. Alexander was an outstanding warrior, rider and swordsman. To be the best, Colin will be trained by the best. First off, there's former US Marine and military expert Captain Dale Dye. I'm going to unscrew his Irish head and pour all of the me, me, me that almost every actor is sort of imbued with. I'm going to pour that out and teach him that the sun does not rise and set on his ass. Weapons and martial arts specialist Julia Rupkalvis. We are going to make Colin uncomfortable. We are going to make the soldiers in the Macedonian army uncomfortable. Uncomfortable doesn't kill you. That's the big lesson. Horse trainer and crack rider, Freddie Joe Farnsworth. I'm not here to teach him how to be an actor. I'm here to teach him how to be Alexander on horseback. That's a big plate to fill, and he's got a long ways to go. There's no one that was there. It's unfortunate I can't meet someone and go, you sat in that appointment, what the f was he like? Was he a nice guy? Was he funny? Was he dull? Was he focused? Was he in the conversation, or did he always stay outside? There's no one I can ask that to. On the other side of the world is Colin's fourth mentor, the 
the historical advisor to the movie, Professor Robin Lane Fox from Oxford University. Oliver Stone wants Colin to know about Alexander's history in order to understand his character. To be Alexander, you have to know Alexander. The history is crucial. It's the difference between our own rather limited imaginations and an unimaginable world of action which we have to portray. I think it is the biggest epic part that could be wished on anyone. And I don't envy Colin the task. But before Colin can get to grips with the history, his three American mentors have six weeks to give this 21st century movie star the kind of raw physical and military training the young Alexander received over 2,000 years ago. Don't let him get away. Good, keep his head up. Over the coming weeks, he must master the art of ancient warfare. I'm a sucker for a challenge. I always have been. I, I, I love a good challenge. I love to be up against it. Mart! There was a brutalness to the time and the period. Uh, what you have to understand is, this is not standing back at several hundred yards and firing a rifle at a person. If you were going to kill a person in those days, you did it by looking in his eyeballs. You did it by rending his body apart. You did it by impaling him on a sharp, pointy object. Every day, Colin is drilled in how to handle the weapons that Alexander would have used, in particular, his swords. has a curve to it, which really makes it a hacker and uh, a devastating weapon. <clears throat> As the movement of the blade, you have an extra little oomph to get that into the bow and get that into a, the center body mass. <clears throat> what I want you to do is to put all of your strength to look as effective as possible. Just whack it. Beautiful. Sharp. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. These do not fire blanks. Mark. 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 Three. In addition to his skill Mark. with weaponry, Alexander learnt to ride almost as soon as he could walk. And in his day, men rode bareback. Well, Alexander had 20 years to master. I have to get Colin to master somewhat of that in five to six weeks, which is not an easy task. He's got a lot of work to do. If you sit there and start doing that, what are you starting doing? I'm all over the place. And then you're trying to hang on. Oh, good. All right, let's walk up to him slowly. Walk, walk, walk. Try to find that rhythm. I got a nappy rush. <laughs> good. <laughs> good. We need to develop his physical skills along with the qualities of Alexander, those things that are requirements for a brilliant field commander. Ah! That's it. Well, in this first phase of training, when I'm getting broken in by these fellas, you know, I'm using muscles I've never used before. The ultimate goal is to make all this second nature. You know, it has to be second nature. It can't be as a result of a thought process. There's too much going on. Those little things, just the physical aspect even now, and the training, yeah. and, the, and the sword playing, and the little bits of reading that I'm doing, trying to find different paragraphs and different books, um, it's, it's, it's helping a little bit, me. Just, it just, it just the activity of going forward is the thing, you know? You are looking at the first few turns of unscrewing his head and getting him out of thinking as an actor and now starting to think as a field marshal. Attaboy, attaboy, attaboy. Now bring him up, there you go. Good. By the time Colin leaves the ranch, he must be ready for the next stage of his transformation into Alexander. He must become a general, capable of leading hundreds of men. In two weeks' time, Colin will be moving to a boot camp in Morocco, where he will take command of his troops. He needs to be able to teach them when we get to Morocco. He needs to have that confidence that's going to show when he's standing there. I can't do it. <laughs> That's an attitude, that's a personality that cannot be faked. It cannot be brought out of nothing. That's it. Yeah. I've been led by great men. And I'll know when I'm looking at him, I'll feel it. My heart will move. And when my heart moves, he's become Alexander. 
I, I don't feel like I, I, I know him, I understand him. I'm near to, you know, being at a point where I could be him in front of a camera. But, but as long as I keep going forward, as long as I keep going forward, as long as I keep retaining, attaining, you know, I, I, I hope I'll be all right, you know. Before Colin can enter the next phase of training, when he will take command of over 700 men, he must understand some of the secrets of leadership. What I want you to understand is all good field commanders, no matter how much they can rock and roll and maneuver elements, are always driven by logistics. logistics. What I'm concerned more with is getting inside Alexander as a military leader, because I'm one. I know the cues, I know what things to look for. I understand some of the things that he must have understood. And I feel some of the things that he must have felt. So what I'm trying to do is point out to Colin how that applies to a soldier. The chariot forces. Greeks. Alexander. By the time Colin leads his men into battle, Captain Dye wants to make sure that he understands the essence of Alexander's military strategy. Show me the Macedonian line. Dale Dye is an old hand, a former Marine captain who has worked with Stone on many of his films. Now, where was Alexander? Alexander was on the right flank. Okay, good. Where was uh, Parmenian? He'd be behind his troops, right? Now, that's the disposition of troops on the day that Alexander chose to accept battle. Captain Dye must give Colin an intensive course in some of the lessons taught, even today, to the cadets at the United States Premier Military Academy, West Point. At West Point, we study Alexander not because of the tactics or the weapons that he used. Obviously, those are obsolete, but because he provides a case study of marvelous generalship in a variety of ways and at various levels of war. Uh, Alexander portrayed the, the heroic qualities that his men expected of him. They wanted him to be out in front, to be the best in everything, uh, to be the most daring, the most dashing the most competent in military skills. If he were not that way, they would look to somebody else to lead them. Back in California, Captain Dye must make sure Colin understands the traits expected of a true leader. The last thing a good leader is, is wishy-washy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The minute you start scratching your butt or scratching your head, the soldiers say, uh-oh. He doesn't know. Alexander yeah. never let that creep in. Enthusiasm is infectious. It's like a disease. Absolutely, yeah. You know, everybody's crying a poor ass, and you come walking out there and saying, it's a lovely day. We're here in the field. Every day's a holiday. Every man's <laughs> a brother. Every payday's a windfall. And that's the kind of enthusiasm that he shows. Okay. Third is endurance. This is... If I have to march you a hundred miles today, I will be at the head. Yeah. Endurance is about don't take the easy way out. Just endure. Yeah. Endure. Push it. It's that simple. And there's a reason that I'm trying to teach you that, because I want you to demonstrate that endurance when you get to the head of your army. Mm. They're going to be, if, if the king quits, everybody quits. Well, it's, it's that thing about, you know, ask, don't ask anyone to do something that you wouldn't fully do yourself. Precisely. It's like, I won't. Just be on my heels. When That's my right. heels stop, you yeah. may stop as well. That's correct. The purpose of all of this is that every time you're in character as Alexander, and every time you're going to make a decision, and every time you're going to do something, I want you to run over these leadership traits and see how they apply. See if which one of them fits this particular scenario. Role. Yeah. Actors can be brilliant, and Colin is a brilliant actor, but he has to be one of the most brilliant field commanders history's ever produced. So he needs to know what it is he has demanded every one of his soldiers to do. You gotta be able to look at a youngster. He has to look in your eyes and he says, you know, I don't understand this. This is dangerous. I could inherently get killed here. But there's something about the look in your eyes that tells me 
I'm okay. I can do this. This will work. Yeah. Now, when we go into training in Morocco, mm. I'm going to be your old salty general. And I'm going to be second guessing you. And you'd better be able to look in my beady ass eyeballs and convince <laughs> me that you're right. Because yeah. that's how we're going to play this. That's what we're going to do. It's mid-August 2003, and it's time for Colin to leave the comfort of his trailer behind. But before joining his troops in Morocco, Colin heads for London to visit Pinewood Studios. Here, hundreds of specialists have been working for months, creating the weapons and other props for Colin and his army. He's keen to learn as much as he can about the tools of ancient warfare. Shield of Achilles. Man, that's, that's beautiful. Good. How are you doing? You well? All right, how are you? Good, man. Me, man. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> On seeing the size of the production, Colin begins to realise the scale of what lies ahead of him. It's just like the scope of the story. I mean, the scope of the story and the scope of the work that everyone here is, is doing. You know, the, the armory, the costumers, the set builders, scale builders, the designers of the whole production. It's just dumbfounding. It's just, it's just bizarre. You know, it's just bizarre. This will probably be the last thing I'll think of, you know, when I close my eyes at night and I, and I dip into sleep. So I'm just ready, I'm just waiting to get into that space, you know. I just want to get out of there, get started, you know, seeing all this shit is so tempting. Oliver Stone has chosen Morocco to stand in for 4th century BC Asia Minor, the scene of Alexander's greatest conquests. For the coming weeks, a boot camp in the sweltering heat of the Moroccan desert will be home to Colin and his army of men. We are creating a training camp here in order to provide a moment of truth for all the performers. The people today do not have an idea of what it means to be a soldier in general, and nobody has a personal experience with what it was like in ancient time. So they can see what it's like when you don't have a, a meal brought to you all the time, when it's hot and you're kind of hungry and you have a bruise or two and you've been running and you've been working hard. You know what that feels like. You know what it, mean, it feels like to miss your family. Um, you know what it feels like to have that sword in your hand all the time, and it's natural. You have a lot of time to think, man, being out here, you know? I have a lot of time to think of think Alexander and think of what he went through and think of what he put himself through, but also demanded that, he, that his men went through with him. At the boot camp, Colin is joined by the actors who will play his generals, Alexander's oldest and most trusted friends, who would follow him to the ends of the earth. Among them is Englishman Elliot Cowan. I'm playing Ptolemy, who is uh, one of Alexander's closest generals, one of his companions, who's a member of the cavalry. He's grown up with Alexander, although he's a few years senior to him, so he, uh, he's had a bit more experience with uh, Alexander's father beforehand. Joseph Morgan. I'm playing a character called Philotus who is a general in Alexander's army, and he's one of Alexander's kind of close companions. Um, and my father is Parmenian. I'm from uh, the, the richest family in Macedon, apart from the royal family, obviously. Um, and so we're of great importance. British actor and former boxer, Gary Stretch. Clytus was possibly one of the strongest warriors in the, in the Macedonian army. 
I would not imagine Titus was the biggest diplomat or that he'd ever re read a book. But he was an intelligent man, but um, really just bred for war. These actors are going through the same rigorous physical training that Colin has been through. The boot camp is also helping Colin and his companions to understand the violent world that Alexander grew up in. They reveled in personal combat, in life and death danger. They're, they're in constant competition. And in a heroic society, anyone who wishes to lead must be the best in all of those things, whether it's fighting, hunting, eating or drinking, even lovemaking, he has to be the best. The desire to be the best was instilled in Alexander from an early age by his father, Philip. Oliver Stone feels Colin must understand the extent of Philip's influence on his character. Philip is being played by Val Kilmer. Philip was the king of the Macedonians. He established nearly all the foundations for what made uh, Alexander great, literally, because they were all the same generals. He trained them all, worked with them all. They'd all grew up together. And uh, Philip, from all accounts, was a grand character. He was loud, uh, loved women, was a drunk, and probably almost unimaginable power in battle, as his son did. As part of his background research, Colin has visited the tomb of Alexander's formidable father. I knew it was based on, you know, a true story, but you still always see it as fiction. It's make-believe, you know? Then they saw Philip's tomb, and it was very upsetting. It was very upsetting. And the, um, the laurel leaf, gold laurel leaf, that Alexander was crowned with, was really, just really nailed me. Alexander was very much Philip's son. He saw in his father bravery in the front line, right where the fighting was most dangerous. He saw charm in his father, a way of speaking that was convincing and persuasive, a political understanding. But it was a difficult act to follow, and that can impel a young son to try to excel on an even grander scale. We all live under the shadows of our fathers. Whether you're obsessed with beating him or succeeding him or surpassing anything he's done, you, you don't really want to do less than your father ever did, I suppose. As an ambitious father, Philip insisted that age 13, his son received the best education available from Aristotle, the greatest mind of the time. Now you think on all this, my young frogs, because in you resides the future of Greek civilization. In Alexander's lessons, there's a lesson for Colin too. He's not just playing a king who is a ferocious warrior and killer. Alexander's someone who's been taught to think, and that intelligence will never desert him. Colin must also understand the importance of another key influence in spurring Alexander's ambition. His mother, Olympias, played by Angelina Jolie. At this time, 330 BC, it's a different way of living. It's, it's a harder way of living. So she was a hard woman, and she was a frightening woman. Whether Alexander was great in the end or flawed or however he was, she certainly just wanted him to be as great as he could be. So in that, I can identify it. Olympias, in my estimation, and like many mothers do, put the mythology in his head that he had a destiny that was beyond uh, the ordinary. Out of that belief and faith grows his monumental drive, urge, destiny. His mother seems to be a very impassioned, maybe insane <laughs> uh, woman. Was it a certain trickle of insanity that gave him the confidence, the belief that he could do what he did? In 336 BC, Alexander was thrust to power after the brutal assassination of his father. He was still only 20. His immediate task was to become a military commander to rival Philip. Colin now faces a similar challenge. 
Giving me one, two, three, one, sir. He has just three weeks more of boot camp to weld his men into a fighting unit and get his fellow actors to look upon him as their leader. Preparatory position, down! Oh! Up you gotta get. Get up, get up, get up. What he has to do is convince the men that he's leading that he's the real deal, that he has the presence, that he should have their respect. Colin must now put everything he has learned so far into practice as he takes on the role of the commander. Colin Farrell is two and a half months into his journey to become Alexander the Great. As he now starts to take control of his troops in Morocco, he's entering the most important phase of his transformation. He muscularized himself, he built himself up, gained weight, and he viewed this as a gravity test, as something that he had to go through a fire. He put it in his mind that I am going to be Alexander, and uh, fought like a lion. <laughs> Colin Farrell uh, has been with us in the field now for almost eight days. Uh, we've been living constantly uh, here in North Africa, in Morocco. We've been living in the field. Uh, we've been doing an extraordinary amount of physical training in the morning. We've been grappling. We've been wrestling. Combat eye to eye, nose to nose. So essentially, he has gone through the school of the soldier as the real Alexander did. It all happens so slowly, bits fit into place day by day, hour by hour, literally, you know, you, you begin to look at things, you begin to understand more things, ever so slowly, you know? All the lads are, are experiencing the same things. All the boys call ourselves character names. But already we're used to addressing each other that way. I'm known as the regent on the camp. The regent will count the cadence, you'll count the repetitions. Ready? Exercise! One, two, three! One, two, three! One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three! In the drive for authenticity, conditions at the boot camp are harsh. Collins' men are forced to train all day, every day, in the blazing heat. Their communication with the outside world has been cut and they're restricted to only one meal a day. It ain't the three-course meal by any stretch of the imagination, but it's enough, and it's more than Alexander and his, his army would have had back in the day. So we just, you know, anything that can get us closer to the true experience of what the boys went through back then, you know, in 335, 340 BC, is, is a good thing. There is no doubt that Alexander's army was incredibly fit physically. They had to be to accomplish what they did over the course of 11 years of constant campaigning in terribly challenging terrain and environments. And that, coupled with Alexander's inspirational leadership, uh, meant a great deal when it came to the success of his campaigns. What we're doing here is trying to recreate that training in a, in a microcosm not only to recreate what Alexander's soldiers had to go to, but also to prepare them for the rigors of filming. Both our ancient soldier and our modern soldier actually carried similar amounts of weight, but what they were able to carry is vastly different. Our modern soldiers able to have food for 14 days, expendable ammunition, survival gear, sleeping equipment, flashlights, hand grenades, etc., etc. He's a working survival unit. On the other hand, your uh, ancient soldier has got a helmet, has got armor on, and has weapons. That's it, just what he needs to survive that battlefield, nothing else. He has no water, has no food, and has no communications equipment at all. Every actor is born thinking, me, 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 how many lines can I say, how much face time can I get, and the hell with everybody else. Uh, Colin's out of that stage. He's well out of that stage. He's not worried about Colin Farrell. He's worried about Alexander's men. He's worried about how my boys doing. Do they have coffee down here? Uh, is there enough firewood? When I see Colin take a, a kid aside here in boot camp, who's faltering, who's, who's tired and doesn't, doesn't understand and is confused, and just takes them away and talks to them and bucks them up and they come back 
and they're ready to go. That's a sign of being a soldier, amazing as that may seem. Colin is at the head, the way he leads us throughout our boot camp, throughout filming, he's got a nature and uh, personality, uh, both sort of intentional and unintentional, I think, which leads us and provokes us into action in a positive sense. After two weeks, Colin's sense of his relationship with his companions is becoming more and more acute. I'm not, a, by any means, a military man. I've always been one of the lads, you know? I've always been one of the lads. That's one minute! But, yeah, you know, I have to stand back from the boys now, a little bit. I have to kind of separate myself from the lads. Like, for me, it's trying to find a balance between pushing them as hard as I should push them, being in control of them as much as I should be in control of them, and, uh, and also them knowing that I'm there for them, that I'll do anything for them, that I'll die for them, kill for them. Um, I'll take anything that they take, any ounce of pain, any mile they jog, I'll be right on their shoulder or right ahead of them leading them. 30 seconds left! So I just want them to know that I'm their leader, but I am also, first and foremost, a soldier. They call him regent. They stand to attention when they talk to him. He has their respect. Like Alexander, Colin never asked his men to do anything he did not do. That's it! That's it, boys! What Alexander asked his men to do was follow him on an 11-year campaign which would take them from Greece in the west to India in the east. His aim was to conquer the whole of the Persian Empire, the biggest and wealthiest in the world. To make up the numbers, Oliver Stone has drafted in a thousand members of the Moroccan army. For Colin, now nearly three months into his journey, the process of becoming Alexander is beginning to take its toll. I'm tired enough, well, I'll keep going, but I'm tired enough to think that he did it for as long as he did it on the road, you know? 11 years and so many thousands of miles that he traversed with an army. We were finding it hard to keep 256 men together here and to keep, you know, the morale of all those men up and to, to make sure that anyone that falls to the back is being picked up to the front. And, and that's only 256 men. I mean, you're talking traveling with armies of 45, 65,000. Phalanx! A turn! Forward! Colin and his army must now master the ancient military strategy which was the secret of Alexander's success, a formation known as the Phalanx. The main goal of this three-week experience, you know, cinematically, is to get the Phalanx. It's going to be 256 men, ranks of 16, and straight towards the Persians. So that's going to take some to do. The bird's eye view of a phalanx would, would depict an elongated rectangle packed full of infantrymen, shoulder to shoulder in several lines or ranks, about eight lines deep. That was the standard phalanx of the day, and it was very effective as a blunt tool, a, a, um, a military formation that would provide a great deal of power moving forward. The phalanx was composed of units called syntagma. Colin's army must faithfully replicate this formation. He had his line of battle in a revolutionary formation, a 256-man syntagma, all armed with a long spear that was 17 to 20 feet long, called a sarissa. We're practicing with those now. Each rank of soldiers would put the sarissa down, would protect themselves with a round shield, and from the front, this formation then would look like a pin cushion, basically, with spear points facing outward. And it would be very difficult for anything or anyone to move through it and stay alive. This is a unique and great experience and, and can't be put together overnight. So three weeks were allotted to create that, for us to learn what those formations were simply and to get as tight and as effective as possible because it was a, an awesome military machine. And then this, the other, the decent effect of that was that we, we all became soldier type people, you know, became men with missions.
It's week two of boot camp, and the men of Collins' infantry are perfecting the phalanx. Meanwhile, the elite cavalry, led by Alexander himself, are having to hone their skills on horseback. It's one thing fighting on the ground with a sword, it's another on the back of a horse. There are profound challenges uh, just to get on the thing. And then once you're on it, the formations are tricky, not only because you have to be aware of everyone around you, but as soon as you get onto this sort of terrain and you're moving through it at speed, within five seconds you've disappeared, everything's disappeared, and all you see is brown, uh, but you can feel your horse moving underneath you, but you can't see yourself move. So it feels like you're flying in a cloud or something, you know? Colin's riding skills are now becoming second nature. He's learning to apply them to a special horse which has been flown in from Madrid to take the role of the legendary Bucephalus, the wild horse that Alexander tamed as a child and rode for nearly 20 years. <laughs> Having mastered the riding, Colin Farrell's next challenge is to lead his men for real as they charge in the decisive battle of Alexander's campaign. The great battle of Gorgamila was fought on a plain in modern Iraq. Oliver Stone plans to recreate it here in Morocco. Everything Colin and his men have learnt over the past weeks is about to be put to the test. In preparation for the big day, Colin has been studying Alexander's tactics at Gorgamila, as soldiers still do today. Darius's forces outnumbered Alexander by a factor of perhaps five to one. We think there were about 300,000 soldiers on the field on the Persian side alone, compared to about 40,000 on Alexander's side. So Alexander faced great odds. Alexander, as was his custom, would arrange his army in one long line with his phalanx at the center and the cavalry on either side. You're on the great plain of Gaugamela here. If you look off to my left, this would be the Macedonian line. The Macedonian line extends off about a mile and a half in that direction. The 400,000 Persians were arranged in two great lines with around 20,000 cavalry on either side. Darius, the Persian king's plan, was to encircle the Macedonians and crush them from behind. Alexander saw through Darius' strategy and began to put his own plan into action. Alexander will ride out in that direction with his companion cavalry, straight out toward the uh, horizon out there. That will cause a reaction in the Persian line, which is all along here. Alexander hoped that the Persians would try to follow him, spreading their troops ever thinner until a gap appeared in their lines. It would be an incredibly high-risk strategy, but like Alexander, Colin must betray no sense of anxiety to his men. On the eve of the great battle, Alexander set up camp a few miles from the plain of Gorgamila. In Alexander's camps at night, the cavalry would be around one group of fires, the infantry perhaps round another. Alexander's camp would have been full of tall stories. There was an atmosphere of anticipation, boastfulness, competition, and then in the evening, sex and drink, the eternal companions of a soldier's life. Colin's men in the boot camp have to go without sex and drink. But as the day of reckoning draws near, his soldiers are brought face to face with the reality of ancient warfare. Generally, the clash of arms didn't last very long. I'm talking, not you. Generally, the clash of arms, the actual hacking and slashing with hair, eyes, and teeth flying all over the area only lasted for a short time. So much of the business of defeating your enemy was by intimidation. When you all came together in the syntagma, it was frightening. You understand now in your mind and in your heart and in your gut what this is gonna require. 
from now on, it gets faster and faster and faster and faster, and you've got to learn. You've got to concentrate. You got to give me everything you've got. Alexander, can't you see? Alexander, can't you see? What the Phalanx done to me? What the Phalanx done to me? Drew some horrible blood and gore. Drew some horrible blood and gore. Turned around and drew some more. Turned around and drew some more. I used to herd a lot of sheep. I used to herd a lot of sheep. Now I barely get some sleep. Now I barely get some sleep. It's a gigantic moment. It's something I've been trying to get my head around for six months. It's something that I, I don't know if, uh, when I'll be ready. I'd give it a good go today, though, I tell you. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just step, it's at being at the edge of the cliff, you know, and I've had a long time to look at the drop, and then it's just taking that final step. Yeah. And once you go, there's no turning back, which is a glorious thing, it's beautiful. gave us this talk and he said about the thing that he's Alexander but he said I can't do it without you and I can't do it without you and I can't do it without you he said we've got to come together like the, the companions did in that time I mean they couldn't have accomplished the feats that Alexander did without his men and so he, he really gave us a feeling of being a part of something you know you can do it you've seen you can do it you can do it with a bit of focus some hard work this will be beautiful Good boy. Colin is in the very end of the process of becoming Alexander the General. He will now be able to control this army in the field through his presence, through his bearing, through his command presence. Phalanx! Attend! Can you do this? Yes, sir! Can you do this? Yes, sir! Let's see it. Filming is about to begin and we shall discover whether Colin has finally become Alexander. Colin has learnt to ride and fight. He has learnt to lead and inspire. Now the day has at last arrived for him to step into the clothes of Alexander the Great. It's bizarre, actually, and a little bit ridiculous. and kind of hard to look at yourself in the mirror at first. Because you're wearing all these fine gowns and and you know, Persian clothing, and, and it's it's empowering, man. It's bottom line, you know. And it's such a detachment from anything I've ever worn in my life, anything I've ever seen, and it fits surprisingly well. And the clothes will eventually, when I wear them like they're my own, that'll be a turning point. We're seeing a youngster go from uh, I'm a Dublin street kid uh, worried about being an actor to I'm a leader of men and I have responsibility therein. Uh, it's a magic transformation, it's a magic change. I'm very proud of it. Oliver Stone has spent the past weeks rehearsing and preparing for the Battle of Gorgamila, still regarded as one of the greatest set-piece battles ever fought. The camera is about to start rolling for the first take, and the moment has come to discover whether Colin has succeeded in becoming Alexander. In this moment, um, as we come up on this crest and overlook this area here with the Persians, we've set up camp all along here and the Greeks, obviously containing a large amount of my Macedonians, are coming across here on the campaign trail. And uh, it's just a defining moment. And this is the time, this is, this is when it's going to happen. This is when we're going to go to battle. There's 300,000 of them, there's 50,000 of us. But tomorrow's going to be the day. Surely this man, if he were human, had to have some kind of fear, some kind of doubt about the outcome. And yet, there's no record that Alexander demonstrated or displayed any kind of fear or uncertainty or discomfort. And he knew what his soldiers really needed to be inspired for battle. He gave them that in abundance. To look at this, Jesus, man, I mean, look at him. To look at all this, just imagine. 
imagine the place, imagine the time, imagine the feeling, imagine the fear or lack of fear, the embracing of the, of the, the future, destiny, fate, the potential, the battle tomorrow, all the boys, it's going to be a lot of blood, it's going to be a lot of blood, it's going to be a lot of lives lost. Everyone on the set behaved as if they knew there was something special about him. There was a special light around him. And I felt it too in myself that Alexander's spirit, such as it, whatever form it took on the set, was there. And it lifted people. It made them better than they were. It made them desire to be better than they were. It lifted the crew. It lifted the actors. It lifted me. It li and I think it made, frankly, the project possible. Colin Farrell is Alexander. Oliver Stone began filming Alexander on the 19th of September, 2003. After three months of blood, sweat and tears, 28-year-old Hollywood bad boy Colin Farrell led 500 men into battle. I say to you, what every warrior has known since the beginning of time, conquer your fear! And I promise you, you'll conquer death when they ask you why you fought so bravely. It's a glorious moment. It's just a glorious moment. Zeus be with us! I just want to get through them and then keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going.